Freedom's the answer. What's the question? You are listening to Ernest Hancock. Stop me now. I'm having such a good time. I'm having a ball. Stop me now. If you want to have a good time, just give me a call. Stop, stop me now. I'm having a good time. Yeah, don't stop me now. We're having a good time here on Declare Your Independence with me, Ernest Hancock, here in Phoenix, Arizona, from the studios of Freedoms of the Nest, freedomsphoenix.com, with Drew Phillips and Nick Barnett. Now, they're, they got, uh, you know, you get all their goodies over at walletvoting.com. And what's this coin worth? What, what's the site? Uh, what's this coin worth.info. And that's uh, where they have a lot of the information there. And also, uh, they do cop block uh, activism here in Arizona. Now, you know, the one thing, after the event Saturday, the 10th Amendment Center put on this Nullify Now thing, you did have an opportunity to, to talk to the guys, and they're young, you know, they're your age probably, you know, and they're, you know, they see this as an opportunity to go around the country and do what? Uh, you know, share information and, and share their <laughs> perspective, and then, you know, and I, I even asked, because we were talking about Sylvia Allen earlier, and kind of the hypocrisy of the state legislator who spoke, and they left a lot of that, it seemed, open for the local uh, activists to uh, invite those people and to make the best judgment calls as to who to have. So they work closely with like Campaign for Liberty and the Tea Party groups and, and with you and, and with other groups. So they they let they let the the event, I think, organize itself somewhat, you know, organically uh, because they had their speakers they knew were going to be, and they got Gary Johnson and each of them, Michael Bolden, and then all of them got their, you know, ten, ten minutes of fame. But then, you know, those suggestions were made by people locally that Sylvia Allen should speak and some of the others. So I think, you know, they. It, 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 it tailored itself nicely again. I mean, I, I can't stand Sylvia Allen. I think that was kind of a smack in the face to us to have her there. But, you know, because we're in the back sitting there and all of us are, you know, involved with or at least pay attention to camera fraud. And we're going, this is the lady that introduced that bill. I mean, this is so hypocritical. But um, so I, I, I and, you know, talking to them afterwards, they were talking about Austin and how they wanting to, to bring this tour to Austin. They've been to Texas, I think, the Dallas area. And, um you know, they're saying, well, how do, how do we do this where we promote it as an all-left event? You know, how do we fill it with, you know, no, nothing but, you know, because Austin's kind of the, the yeah, weird, Go strange. to Tucson. Well, yeah, that, exactly. That was another thing. Uh, they were talking about how it's just recently that the Tenth Amendment Center has become uh, a place for conservatives to get together. And uh, prior, like during the George Bush and before, it was all left. It was all lefties wanting to nullify certain things like marijuana laws. Yeah, but they'll take the money. <laughs> Because that's really what it comes down to. I was talking to them and so on. They're, hey, man, we're businessmen. You know, hey, we want to get our thing out and talk to whatever, and they want to put forth the effort and marketing and, these guys, whatever. And, you know, um, I, I forget his name. John Bush is his radio partner. I feel terrible. Um, uh, great guy. Um, they, Jason, they, I think. Yes. And they uh, they were hustling. Me and Nick noticed that. I mean, they were they were working men. They were passing out their radio show CDs as people were going in and please come buy our book and support our I mean and they were, you know, putting flyers on every chair of the seat and I go, Oh yeah, I should have asked Ernie to pay me to do that. But you know, uh, <laughs> but they were they were working. I mean they were out promoting their thing and, and their you know, the free society that they're they were trying to advocate for and so and that's what these events are. I mean, that's what Nick and I were there, and Tom, we were working and, you know, trying to... Did you get rid of all stuff. the DVDs that we had on the table? Oh, no, because, are you kidding? There were they, Tom did, like, hundreds of them, and we didn't get rid of all of them. But we, you know, we gave a, a bunch of them out and so on. You know, um, the first I heard of this event, I, I can't remember who, I think... John Bush was one of the first ones to contact me. And he said, uh, yeah, Ernie, we're this and that and so on. We need to get you guys involved in Phoenix. We're doing this nullify whatever Tenth Amendment thing. And I know what the Tenth Amendment issue is. I've gone through this in the '90s. It was a big thing that they did out of Colorado in the state legislature. I think it was even Karen Johnson was involved in a lot of this stuff. So I'm going, yeah, 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 yeah. It's still more of uh, you know use the system. And I'm going, I really don't have any interest. I mean, I'll do let you guys put a, a banner ad up. I'll promote it, or we'll go get a table. We'll do whatever. But I'm just, you know, I don't feel like participating really i got other stuff to do i'm i'm busy Plus, yeah would, but then when it came to it you had them all on and you came down oh yeah yeah you know. no I'll, I'll give them the spiel you know i'd you know but i showed up set it up for you guys and i left i got i got a life man you know yeah. oh thanks yeah <laughs> but before i uh heard your show on friday and you called me like the week before you're like oh, i need somebody to help on the booth and i was like at a 10th amendment thing 
Yeah. Come on, Ernie. <laughs> well, no, and, and but that's the point you're making is is it had the it had a more mainstream Republican feel to it. That's the that was the audience, and that's who they drew in, and of course all those crazy anarchists. But it was put on by some. Well, anarchists. see, that's what made me feel better when I had talked to Bryce and then Michael on Thursday and Friday. And, and that now, is in, in the in the studio, I had Stuart Rhodes sitting where you are, and I had Michael over there where Nick is, and we're going at it. Now, of course, Stuart Rhodes, the Oath Keepers, he's like, "Oh yeah, the Constitution, this and that, and Ron Paul and Congress." And Michael's kind of <laughs> like, "I've never voted." I mean, you know, so <laughs> it, it's uh, so I go, "Okay, I feel a little better that we're you know that this kind of you know." Voluntarist, nunist. Uh, I don't want to have anything to do with you know. Well, how do you thing. how do you how do you get Republicans over? How, how do you get you know? How do you, you don't. Get- I mean, a lot of these guys. I mean, I'm telling you, these people that were in that audience, I recognize probably eighty percent of those people. And they are the same for the past 15 <laughs> years. Okay. They go to these meetings and they blah 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 I'm blah. Sorry. I'm sorry. How do you convince the people on the internet watching Tom's video of the event? Th- that's what I'm saying. Is by them having this conference, somebody in that crowd is going to go, "Oh, you know what? I I I reject this Republican restore the Constitution." Yeah, no, no, I'm hip. So I'm, you know, I'm you can never. Yeah, you know, it's like anything you promote. You can never really quantify the uh, benefit and the net outcome of what it was. But well, no, I'm glad you guys were there because you and know I'm that, glad they gave us an opportunity to be there yeah, and no, we got to pimp pimp the silver. To, to ha- well, it's more than that. It was it's. Well, I tell you what it was like. It's like um, Bill of Rights Day, which was December 15th. You had Gary Johnson spoke there, too. You had Bob Levy from Cato. You had, you know, other people. Then you had legislators coming. You know, Russell Pierce and so on were there. And all of a sudden, you get people cheering for getting out of Afghanistan and Iraq, people cheering for ending the drug war, people cheering for, you know, liberalizing the gun laws and screw the government, uh, the debt and all this other stuff. And all these politicos are sitting there going, uh... I'm not in Kansas anymore. And 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 here's and here's the point. Russell Pierce was rumored to be coming to the event on Saturday. Hell no. And he didn't. No. Why? Because the same thing in the Bill of Rights Day. He would have looked way out of place. He'd yep. have felt out of place. He'd he'd have Shelton would have probably gone off on him in camera too. So, uh, th- but but isn't that a win for us that, that these legislators can't come to our events or these events and come and lie to us and tell us that they're going to save us and do good things and. You know, Isn't that a benefit? Isn't yeah, that a, a victory? You know, I think that's one of the, the, the main benefits out of this thing is I think they realize now that they have no credibility. Sylvia came and got an earful. I mean, so she may they, think they, twice. I'd, they can't lie to us. It, it would have been great if Russell Pierce would have been there. Um, him introducing uh, blatantly unconstitutional uh, uh, legislation or legislation to change or to d- deny citizenship to people that are born here to illegal immigrant yeah, the parents. Other, the, the other reason he probably didn't show up was because they, <laughs> they pulled out a recall petition on him the day before. That might have something to do with it. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, they did a recall petition on Russell Pierce. I tell you, there's a problem with some libertarians, you know, that are involved in that thing did it Friday. Well, today, the Democrats are going to do it, and they're all pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> and, to, and and sometime this week, I'm going to take Tom down to uh, Mesa, and I'm going to get him to carry both petitions, the Democrat and the Republican, and get some video of him going you know, door-to-door at the supermarket saying, oh, no, you got to sign both, because the Republicans and the Democrats are fighting over who gets to recall them first. Oh, I mean, that's so, good, that's good. Because it's childish that they're fighting with each other. So, I mean, I don't even care to participate in the petition process anyway, but it'd be fun to illustrate how there's two of them, and they're, you know, it's, it's their own egos that they're you know fighting against for who gets to... Well, Recall you know, one Russell. of the other things that was there, the Campaign for Liberty had a uh, uh, 11 by 17, so it's like a 8.5 by 11 folded four-page uh, little newsletter. And what was in that newsletter was talking about Russell Pierce's support of this job bills thing. So the Campaign for Liberty came out against this thing because it's like the, you know, the Transportation Authority, New York Transportation Authority or Tennessee Valley Authority, it's authority without limit. A budget. I mean, it's just if they can bond it and sell the bonds and they'll guarantee with the taxpayers' money, then they can spend it. That's what this whole thing was about. And it, it's coming out and Russell is right behind this thing. And it's it's Goldman sucks is what it is because it's all about the selling of the bonds. That's what's going on. So Campaign for Liberty had this information out there. And if he'd showed up, yeah, he, he, he might not have come out smelling too good on this one. So, yeah, it's all a tapestry. I'm just glad that the message of none, none is at least an option because it's going to be that way anyway.